It's February 1st and storm clouds are starting to pass the proving grounds. I gotta tell you, the weather forecast, and I think sometimes they hype it up, but man, they're calling for ice and snow and sub-zero wind chill and temps in the low single digits. They're talking about a brutal Arctic front passing through the Midwest. Just yesterday, I don't have any footage, I was in my pickup, I saw two bucks chasing a doe, probably a, you know, a large female fawn, antlers on all of them, and just getting it going. They're burning a lot of calories still, they probably haven't recovered from the rut. Our habitat is so good here at the Proving Grounds, even though we're in the Midwest and basically closed canopy forest, everywhere around us are, you know, fescue pasture, no real habitat there for whitetails or turkeys. Our fawns are so healthy here that they easily reach that 70 pounds and reach puberty, you know, from late December till now, even into early March. Those bucks are working hard. And this kind of brutal temperatures coming in, single digits, below zero wind chill for multiple days, not just one day, well, that's tough conditions. Making it worse, there's gonna be a covering of ice according to the weather folks. And if we look down here, we'll show you, man, there's cereal rye and winter wheat. Some of the oats got knocked out and lots of clover. A clover's two, three inches tall, two inches tall, and super lush. I mean, and again, there's, there hasn't been any fertilizer here, or lime here. We've just built this on a rock pile, literally. But that doesn't matter if it's covered with an inch or two ice. Whitetails are not gonna paw through that. And that's the real reason when I design blends, I try to have a grain like you're seeing this Milo in here. Man, it looks really good. And we're pitching drone across here, but on the edges where deer are coming out of timber, they've ate it off 10 or 15 yards off either side, but center of the field, this looks like a Kansas Milo field. But I've got all kind of green blow it. And that's why I like blends. Polycultures are many species not only does that do wonders for the soil, a monoculture is never as good for soil health as a polyculture, but this standing grain, which deer have been eating the edges, but it's been warm, so they've been preferring greens. And there's six inches of snow on the ground. This is gonna pay major dividends, and we've shared this graph before, but we want deer you know, gaining through the growing season and then level if we can through the winter, not diving way down and having to play catch up in the spring when it should be taking off that level spot and getting larger. More fawns, better milk, larger antlers, just in general, a healthier deer herd. Now, this Milo may get a little ice on it, but that's gonna thaw when the sun's hitting on here quicker than this ice and snow's gonna melt on the ground. Acorns are all gone, at least here this time of year. We didn't have that great a crop this year due to a late freeze last year. But this Milo's gonna be here, and I promise you, hopefully we'll have time to get back and show you the tracks in the snow. Don't, not saying we will, but hope we will, but high energy, good carbohydrates. Deer have that big rumen, and it puts off a lot of heat, so they're gonna be able to stay warm just by getting in the cover, which isn't very far over here. When this thaws off just enough to crunch this, they're gonna get out here and eat this Milo, somewhat similar to corn, and just load up on that, and all those microbes in their body are breaking that down. And that's not only providing nutrients, but heat, body heat for that critter. Speaking of microbes heating stuff up, I don't think I've stressed enough, but the same thing's happening in soil when you've got a really actively growing crop like I have here. And insulation, of course, last year's crop is laying there in mulch, that's what suppressed weeds. And obviously we didn't use a herbicide because got all this milo here and then got a good crop growing. And I didn't have any fertilizer cost, no herbicide cost. I've got grain, enough to make me into February really good, carry the deer herd, plenty of greens that as soon as that ice and snow's off, it's gonna green up. It's really inexpensive, and those microbes below this are heating up the soil. So what we commonly see is snow and ice melt off our food plots a bit quicker than they do in my yard or leaf litter in the timber because these microbes are respirating also. They're just, they're putting off heat, and the more microbes you have, they break down literally rock or nutrients in the soil and make it in a form that plants can absorb. And part of that process, super beneficial to plants, it's also providing heat. So my clover's gonna green up quicker than if you just really disc your field and you got sterile soil and all of a sudden it snows or ice is on it. Maybe you're my neighbor and you just disc a lot and you know, you grew a crop, but your soil's not very healthy. All those microbes and earthworms and you know, little insects in the soil here, they're respirating, they're working, they're moving, 
They're gonna warm up the soil quicker and I'm gonna get an extra couple of days of growth out of my crop here. And that can really mean the difference of more milk for that doe nursing fawns or bigger antlers at the same age class. I mean, who doesn't want you know a 140 as a three-year-old versus a 140 as a five-year-old? A lot can happen to a deer between three and five. So it's not just all about antlers, but antlers get a lot of people's attention. I'm looking for healthy soil, which allows a healthy deer herd and a byproduct of that is large antlers for the age class. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Reconix, Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Burris Optics, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Storm clouds are rolling and we probably need to get out here. We got to get this to the editor because they're talking about some big power outages. So to get an episode out for y'all, we got to get us to the editor and he can do his magic before the power gets out. Don't worry about it. I got a bunch of dry oak in my garage. Power, no power. I got venison and I got firewood. I'm going to be okay, but I'm just going to pull up a stock here. This is a smaller one. The soil is not very cold to the touch. You can't tell it through the camera, but look at all the roots. Look how dark that soil is. I mean, compared to my coat, I have a black coat on. Compare that. Super rich soil. This was oaks like you may see in the background and cedar trees and gnarliness. We called this area prickly pear because there was literally prickly pear cactus growing on this ridge top because it was so dry. And everyone's like, you're gonna try to create a food plot there? I mean, Iowa dirt is any blacker than that. And that's a lot of carbon in soil that the plants during the summer and sun hemp and other things are in here photosynthesized and took carbon out of the air, wonderful thing, put it in the dirt. And then you see how green this is, the cereal rye, the winter wheat, the clovers, the brassicas, deer have eaten a lot of Nebraska's we had in here. They were photosynthesizing all winter long at a slower rate because there's not as much sun during the day. Now the days are getting longer, the clover's what we call popping coming on, and they're still working at soil, feeding the microbes. Remember, my underground herd, the microbes in the soil do all the work. This gets the glory, but this is just really feeding the microbes. And I'm feeding the microbes even in these tough conditions, so when spring comes, fertilizer's ready, the land has been aerated or disc, if you will, but these big roots growing. If I disc, I'm just gonna collapse all those pores. All this I could go on and on results in less expense and healthier deer. Hey, if you wanna learn more about our techniques, actually see it, see the dirt, see the actual blends, ask me questions, ask Daniel questions, ask Keith Burns and others that are gonna be here questions. Visit with the Growing Deer Pro staff. Join us March 25th and 26th for the 2022 Spring Field event. Now it's gonna fill up quick, only 100 slots, but join us, we'll put a link on the screen here. And stay safe during this storm. It's gonna be pretty broad, they're saying, and pretty impactful. It's a great time to get outside if you can do it safely. Don't be driving on ice and enjoy creation. And more importantly, take that quiet time to intentionally Seek the Creator's will for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.